this is a really great question because everyone wants to know how we might you know improve regenerative outcomes in human patients right and so one way that you can really start to think about how to do that is to ask the question what are the genes that enable axolotls to regenerate so well and if you have the whole genome then you can consider all the genes because you know you have the identity of all the genes and so what we can do is we can say what are the genes that help axolotls or are necessary for axolotls to regenerate and then we can compare those genes to the genes in the human and we can say okay do humans have these genes or do they not have these genes and for ones that humans might not have we can say what would happen if you gave for instance a mammal um, that gene for instance what would be the consequences could you at some level improve regeneration maybe even just a little bit and then another thing you can do is say okay what about for the genes that both axolotls and humans and mice all of them have are they 100 percent identical um, you know do they make the exact same protein or not and do all the same cells make that kind of protein etc so you can go in and actually compare you know point by point to see exactly how similar or different they are and that will give you some clues about you know where they might where they might be different and if they're um, important for regeneration you could say well maybe the human one is perhaps broken um, in this spot right so that would be really important it's also really important experimentally for us to be able to assign function to particular genes the gold standard in genetics is to remove them, so to delete the gene, and then see what the consequence is on the thing you're studying, so in this case, regeneration. And with the technologies that we have now, so for instance, CRISPR editing technologies, you can do that if you know what gene you're studying, but if you don't know what all the other genes are that the axolotl has, you might secretly be mucking with one of the other ones, or many of the other ones. And so having the whole genome allows us to much better predict what might be the accidental um, you know, what we call off-target um, genes that we might also be hitting so that we can be much more specific about saying, okay, we are studying this one particular gene and this is its function, rather than not knowing that we're really disrupting a whole bunch of different ones at the same time.